Schutte. Number 54, Rob Gilpin. Starting at a forward, number 42, Mark Severin. Severin is a six foot junior. Scoring average. Good ball player. Number 30, Kevin Tracy. Tracy, a 6'1 junior, averaging just under nine and a half points per ball game. Center, number 50, Jeff Robinson. There he is, the big guy. 6'8 junior, 21.3 per. At a guard, number 42, Stacy Turan. Turan is a senior. He's 6'6, 11 and a half points a game. And at the other guard, number 10, King Duke. Yeah, this is the youngster that makes this ball club go. King Duke, a 5'4 junior, averaging 10-1. And coach, William Smith. Bill Smith in his eight year as the head coach of the Broad River Rockets with a record of 110 wins and 63 losses coming into the semi-state. A look at the officials now. Number uh, Richard Freeman is the tall gentleman to the left of your screen. And Nick Swigert is to the right side of your screen. They're the officials for our contest this afternoon. Broad Ripple now 25 and 2. Connorsville 19 and 5. And I will have the presentation of the colors and the playing of our na national anthem. And of course, Tech High School, they're coming. This is their turn to host. Actually, they host this particular uh, session in regional and Delmar State at Hickle Fieldhouse. Cheers. And this is uh, their presentation of the colors in the national anthem.
Joe Sexton, you have been before as a member of the, the Arsenal Technical High School team. Good grief. Many, many, many years ago. Did they still have the peach baskets back when you were playing? They, they had taken them down by then, had yes, they? Yes, that's right. I see, and they still had the jump ball at center court, though. Well, to start the game, that's right. <laughs> You've been here before. You've felt the pressure of a semi-state. What's it all about? Are the youngsters really hyped up right now? Well, it appears to me that, uh, that Connersville is really excited right now. But I saw the first two guys introduced, and uh, they missed hands when they were trying to slap hands. I thought maybe they were a little excited. But... Uh, Zimmerman in the corner. They lob it across to Kidd. He gets a little move in on Robinson. Can't get it. Rebound fought for and finally pulled out by Jeff Robinson. No advantage on the Brett Duke. Pulls it away. Hit up on the foot and last touched by Jeff Atkinson of Broadripple. One thing up Broadripple, Joe, when they run a break, it's liable to end up in the hoop or in the balcony here. You never really know. <laughs> well, he really was open there. And, uh, I think maybe somebody got a, a, a finger on the ball, but... Uh, that was the first time that Mackey had had a chance to touch it. Bill Mackey, he's an outstanding shooter. That might have been out of his range. The Rockets have it, and King Duke's playing pitch and catch with C. Turan. In the corner and back out to Duke again. Here is Kevin Tracy. Kevin Tracy is number 30. In Joe Sexton, we have watched Tracy play awfully well for two successive Saturdays, particularly if not outside 18-foot area. He's a really good outside shooter. Five ball game. 44, Rick Zimmerman gets his first two of the afternoon. Zimmerman is a 52% shooter from the floor. We're locked up at two for the first time. These ball clubs can shoot it. Rutherford is shooting 53% in tournament play. Pottersville is shooting 56% all the year. Inside Robinson, there's the hook shot. I don't think so. We have very much from Robinson. He prefers the little turnaround jumper. Pretty crowded in there. He made a nice move to get that hook shot off. Uh, Connorsville's playing a 2-3 zone. That's the first time that Robinson had handled the ball. We have played a couple of minutes now, and it's 4-2. Broad Ripple's Rockets are in front of the Connorsville Spartans. And here's a point. It's on station. A lot of them chasing each other around here this afternoon, or this morning, actually. I keep forgetting we're playing in the morning hour. Connorsville's Hardens, that is first on him with a second against the ball club. And Stacey ran inbounds to King Duke from the free throw line. Split with the rebound. Zimmerman. Zimmerman gets a sick field goal. We're locked up at four. It's the second time it's been tied. Pottersville yet to lead in this contest. They've been behind 2-0 and 4-2. And with three minutes gone in the first period, they've got the basketball and a chance to get the lead. They had the outlet pass and couldn't get it up to Zimmerman. Instead, they work it left side to Bill Mackey. Mackey's a husky young man. He is over to the field now, and the rebound follows committed on uh, 
Pottersville's number 42, and that'll be Mark Severed. Number one on Mark is 6'3 junior, number against the ball club, so again, no shots involved, and Rodriguez brings it up. Joe, let's check the defense now of Connersville. What are they in? Then a 2-3 zone, and they're backing in uh, on uh, Jeff Robinson. The one thing that they cannot do is allow uh, Kevin Tracy to outside with the one basket he made, but they're trying to force him to shoot it outside, and it looks like that Stacy Turan is going to have an opportunity to get some shots. Excellent move by Jeff for his second field goal of the night. He had Atkinson down low, took the ball to the hole, and got the little shot out front. Makes it 6-4. to four. Oh. Broad Ripple's Rockets ranked seventh in the state. Robinson knocks it away. Mackey gets it back. Swings right side to Severn. Knocked again. And here comes Broad Ripple. The Rockets with Kevin Tracy in command. Now King Duke right side. Swings it down the corner and back out it comes. The draw line is to Rand. Back to Duke. Now they've got it free in the corner to uh, Tracy again. And the rebound pulled off by Steve Pittman of Connersville. Four minutes and two seconds to play. Mackey turns down the 18-footer. Swings it down deep in the left corner. And a foul will be called. It's on Rutherford's Kevin Tracy, number one on him. Connersville, basically tells me, Joe Sexton likes to use their defensive philosophy as a full-court press, which we have not seen as of yet. And they like half-court multiple defense. We have not seen that yet either. We've, we've seen them pick them up from the regular defensive position, so they've got a number of defensive things they can do. Right. I don't anticipate much full-court pressure unless they get behind against Waterville because King Duke is so good with the basketball. They're down by two. And gives uh, Mackey 0 for 3 the field. 3.45 to go. Near side is Stacy Turan. Bangs it off the board. The rim and back off the board and back inside. Turan getting his first two of the contest. And it's a four-point lead now for the Broad Ripple Rockets. 8 to 4. In the lane. Knocked away. Reaching in on King Duke. On King, that's number one. Jerry, we saw some full court pressure that time by Broad Ripple. Substitution out of the lineup for Connersville is number 24. Mark Lee, who was in for only a couple of minutes, inbounded to Bill Mackey. Point man is Pittman. Back to Mackey again. He's really being guarded closely by Stacy Turan. He's a good defensive player. In the lane, knocked away as Zimmerman tried to force it. And here comes Broad Ripple leading 8-4 to four with 3.20 to go in the first period. In the middle, deflected away. Last touch for the red shirts of Connersville High School. Connersville, average winning margin this year, 16 and a half points per contest. They have really done a number on some of their opponents. Their average loss margin was only 7.4, which means they were in almost every contest. Robinson can't get it. Rebound beautifully by Turan. Back up and good. Stacy Turan, second field. Lee Robinson have four each. Tracy has the other two, and it's a 10 to 4 contest. And turnover belongs to Broad Ripple. And right now, Joe. It looks like Cottersville's having a little trouble getting reorganized. We commented before the ball game. One thing they can't afford to do is get down by any size, sizable margin to this uh, Broad Ripple team. Timeout has been called. It's a 10 to 4 contest. Ripple leads it 259 to play in the first period, and we'll return to Hinkle Field House in a minute. on hooks for convenience and great selection. And our own brand products offer you quality at low, low prices every day, like Hooks Aspirin 300s for relief of headaches, colds, aches, and pains. All this month, it's specially priced at 89 cents. The price will never be lower. Remember, Hooks for quality home and... Have a Coke and a smile Makes you feel good <laughs> Makes me feel nice <laughs> Oh, that's the way it should be I'd like to see The whole world smiling with me Coca-Cola has life Have a Coke and a smile <laughs> Oh, section back <laughs> Now, Bill Mackey has missed his first three shots, Jerry, so he's going to have to get the hitting for him because it, obviously they're looking for him as he's taking those shots pretty quick. Looks like Cottersville stays in the 2-3 zone, and so far they have not had a great deal of success in there because they're still being able to penetrate and get the ball to Robinson and to Atkinson deep in the corners. On the near side, that is Tracy. Kevin 
Jim Tracy, second field. Tracy averages 9.4, but in five sectional games and regional games, he has averaged almost 11 per contest, 10.8. It's Torp, Broad Ripple, and they have been impressive. Here's Al Kidd. Yes, sir. Al Kidd gets his first two of the afternoon. Kidd is a 63% shooter from the floor, and they've got to have a lot of shooting out of him, and Mackey's got to get on. It's 12 to 6 now, with Broad Ripple still in front. They have the lead at eight, and it won't fall this time as the rebound is tap free, and outside it goes, out on two, Broad Ripple. Connorsville sets up again in the zone. Connorsville lost its first game of the year to Union County, 69-67 in overtime, but they lost two of their first three. In the middle, foul call. They were trying to double-team Big Jeff Robinson and Mark Severn, who came in from the weak side, picked up his second personal ball. Mark Severn is going to come from behind here. We will see him come in the picture. There's a lob pass, and there comes Severn for the foul. It's a nice idea, and they're trying to do uh, put Kidd in front or on the low post side, and then... Uh Stacy Turan with his three, third field goal of the, uh, of the morning. Turan is averaging 11 and a half per contest, but only six per contest in postseason play. It's 14 to six, back to the eight point lead. Finally, Bill Mackey gets it to fall. He is now one for four. Maybe that'll loosen things up for him, Joe. I think it gets started now. He's not hesitating. He knows he has to do it. A minute 35 to play. King Duke 20 feet out. Duke gets his first two of the afternoon. Duke missed four games about three-fourths of the way into the season. He had a broken hand, but he's back and healthy now. And a rebound on Stacy, a ref foul, I should say, on Stacy Turan. That's two on him, and I think Broder Ripple Joe's as aggressive as you look at Basil Mulby, about as aggressive as I have seen them on defense in the tournament so far. Well, Stacy Turan is a very good defensive player, and, uh, but he can ill afford to be fouling uh, 30 feet from the basket. That's his second foul. Check the uh, change of the lineup. Jeff Atkinson were really turning to the lineup, and Stacy Turan going out with that second personal foul and a half a dozen points. And here is Connorsville's Steve Pittman missing from the free throw line, and the loose ball out of bounds will jump it up. Connorsville is a 6-7 percent. Free throw shooting team. Broadbolt only 66 percent in sectional play. A minute 20 to go, first period. It's six. Make it 16. Kidd picks up field goal number two. Now Kidd is a very intelligent young man, sixth in a class of 398. Robbed in Robinson. He's got it again. Jeff Robinson's third field goal, and Joe, there's nothing fancy. Get him set down low, throw it to him, and turn around 10 foot. Broder was using good patience uh, on the offense to get the ball to Jeff Robinson. He's doing a good job with it, of course. 80 to 10, your score with. Broderpool in front with less than a minute to go. We're down to about 48 seconds now in the first period. Ottersville in red. On the scoreboard, when you see it, they're the visiting team. Picked up near side by Mark Lee. Into the corner is Kidd. It's stolen away by Kevin Tracy. The lead in the upcourt to Jeff Atkinson. He won't get it, but a foul is called. On the trailing man, it looks to be Steve Pittman, and indeed it is. And on Steve, that is number one. Nice, the 15 foul against Connorsville. King Duke made a nice pass. There. Bill Smith, the very active coach along the sideline. Bill, as I mentioned, in his eighth year as the head coach. Atkinson getting his first two of the morning. Jeff is basically a sixth man of this ball club. He has started about half the games this year, so he is not only unaccustomed to getting the starting ball, as he did today. Averaging 12 points per game and six rebounds. Rebounded by Robinson, but it won't go as he is called for the personal foul. That is number one on him. Jerry, Jerry it looks like uh, they're not going to allow anybody to get a, a rebound from behind, whether they go over their back or not, so they're going to have to quit going up over guys if they have position on them. It's very important early in the contest, Joe, I guess, to get an idea of how the officials are going to call those fouls tonight. And they're calling them pretty close to the for sort of this game in the first quarter here. Al Kidd, first free throw. Kidd percent free throw shooter. He is tops in the ball club in that category. Al with five points now. He was all conference this year. Half a dozen. 
Coach Wilder comes at full court press we talked about, Joe, and here's a blocking foul called against Connersville's 44. For Rick Zimmerman. And that's who on him. So with 19 seconds remaining in the first period, it's a 19 to 12 contest with the Broad Ripple Rockets out in front and a relatively high scoring first period of play with all things considered. Seen both teams now use full court press sparingly. Substitution for Connors with Lynn Eldridge, number 22, a 6'1 junior, into the lineup. Zimmerman will get a chance to uh, catch his breath on the other side of the court. Jeff Atkinson, number 52, is at the free throw line, where it's now two out of two. And that's his point total this afternoon. Now he is three out of three. And we go to a 21 to 12 lead for the Broad Ripple Rockets, a nine point margin. That is the largest they've had this afternoon or this morning. I keep forgetting that we're playing in the morning here this year. Now the 15 seconds to go. Mackey double team forces the shot up. It's off the mark and the rebound across on the others. Rockets might get one more attempt. We're down to five seconds and what a. He's had reason to be a little upset. The uh, Nick Swagger stopped play when Broadway had the basketball. He stopped it because of Basil Moby, the coach at Broadway, or uh, coach of uh, Connersville. He's got to give him a technical or not him. No, and that's what Bill's griping about because his team's on a break with six seconds to go. Now the clock starts again. Here's a good shooter, Tracy. Yes, sir. Kevin Tracy, I think, is three out of three, and that's the end of the first period. After one, it's 23 to 12. Broad Ripple has the lead for Connersville. We'll be right back. Over 350 good eggs. Your independent insurance agent in Indiana is a good egg. And over 350 of them are agents for Indiana farmers and town and country mutual insurance companies. Whether you need family auto coverage or a homeowner's or farm owner's policy, your agent will help you select the right coverage for your needs. Indiana Farmers Mutual is one of the largest riders of farm insurance in the state because of broad coverage, reasonable rates, and top flight grade A claim service. Special policy. <laughs> Be sure to call on the Indiana Farmers and Town and & Country Mutual Insurance Agent near you. He's a good egg, and there are over 350 of them in Indiana. First period is history. It's 23 to 12. The Broad Ripple Rockets have the lead over the Cottersville Spartans, and Cottersville Joe Sexton has done into a rather large hole as you peek into the huddle of the Ripple Rockets. Yeah, well, it's going to be a little tough for them now. From this, uh, we can't count them out, of course. It's only the first. They're going to have to change their defense for, uh, because they can't give up 23 points a quarter. Expect to beat Broad Ripple. Broad Ripple's too good for them to, to be able to make that up. So let's, let's look for a change in the Cottersville defense. Rockets over 70 points a contest, 70.1 during the regular season, 67-8 during the... And Cottersville controls the second half, the second period tap. Steve Pittman, number 10, in the corner to Mackey, get free and get some shots and call the jump ball. Five-second uh, rule. And there's no ball movement on Cottersville's part right now, Joe. I tell you what, Jerry, because that man-to-man -man defense at Broad Ripples was tremendous. They shut off all the passing lanes. Ripple controls the tip. They've got it to King Duke. And a fine defensive play by Pittman, but he may have picked up the personal. Indeed, he did. On Steve. those hands up a lot better off King Duke is identified by head coach Bill Smith as the team leader and if you get a chance to watch this Ripple Rocket Ball Club play on Hall you'll find out very quickly that this young man does an awful lot of things that show up in the score column perhaps in somebody else's name but he gets the ball to the open fence very well and aggressive on defense for a guy only 5-4 he has both free throws and he has points now We'll check the first period stats, and we have an opportunity. It's 25 to 12 with Broder out in front by 13 big ones. Tapped up by Kidd. Good shot. Now Kidd 
returns the missed shot from Bill Mackey, and that chops the lead down out of 11 at 25 to 14. Ball game was tied at two, and again at four. And here is Kevin Tracy with an air ball, rebounded across the way, put back up, and it wouldn't go, but the foul is on Bill Mackey. It's one on him. You know, one of the most overlooked guys of this wonderful ball club, Joe, has to be number 30, Kevin. <laughs> Compliment to the inside play of an Addison or a Robinson because he can put it up 15 feet out. That's right. He takes some from Robinson inside because he absolutely cannot leave him uh, alone out on the, on the wing there. Jerry Snyder at the free throw line off the bench has not scored. Misses the first of a pair. Now Kid brings down the board. Get a chance to see Al Kid's right eye. Rather discolored. It's a black eye. He caught, I think, in the regional space, he told me, when I was out Thursday talking with him. Here is the steal. The lead pass to Durant. Taken away and a foul call. And should say on Snyder. Wonderful in a hurry. And the turnover, and Snyder picks up the ensuing foul. So we make the walk to the other end. Mark Everton from uh, Connersville uh, did a nice job there hustling back and made that steal. Mark Sutter. Rebound Broad Ripple. Not as Villa scored two this period, as has before the scoring pace slowing down a little bit. But in a hurry, Jeff Atkinson picks up two on a field goal, his first of this morning. He has five points. He was three out of three from the free throw line of the It's a 27 to 14 contest now. With the Broad Ripple Rockets out in front with 6.44 to play. Mackey had it stripped away. The ball picked off by Atkinson. The lead pass to King Duke. Good move inside. Would not go. Rebound and a great effort by Jerry Snyder. Snyder getting his first field goal of the day. And timeout has been called by Connersville. It's 29 to 14. Broad Ripple is in front. 6.32 to go. First half. We'll be back in a minute. There's something I can help you with today, sir. Ah, uh, yes, I'd like to buy some for around $100. For $100, $100. you could get a do-it-yourself money market certificate from American Fletcher. That, that's a tone arm. That's right. For as little as $100, $100, for as little as two and a half years, you can earn at this high rate. For this effective annual yield, the $100 do-it-yourself money market certificate from American Fletcher. Music. Each book contains advice about treatment, medication, and prevention of common medical problems. Of course, they cannot be a substitute for your doctor's diagnosis and care, but the advice can help you stay healthy and avoid serious medical problems. Tufts New England Medical Center Family Health Guides at the prescription counter of your neighborhood Hooks, dependable drugstore. Connorsville coach Basil Moe Sexton completely beside himself when he called timeout. He stayed out of the floor for a couple of minutes to try to get his head because all of a sudden his Connorsville Spartans have found themselves exactly where they do not want to be, trying to play catch up against a, a group of Broad Ripple Rockets that love to get out and go and do all kinds of strange leagues. I think he's trying to get the attention of that official, uh, maybe wanting some fouls, but they've been outscored 13 to 4, Jerry. Al Kidd. Rebound yanked off by Kevin Tracy. Steal, but Tracy comes back with it anyway, and a foul. No, they call walking. Kevin Tracy picked up the uh, walking violation. I think they may have called it on Atkinson prior to the lost ball. You know, the quickness of uh, the quickness of Broderpool showed up there. They got that loose ball right in the middle of the floor. They're sharp again today. That's Bill Hackey. They've got to get him free somehow. He's had a tough day. Here is Kidd. Penetration blocked away by Robinson. Kidd gets it back again, though. Now swings it outside to Pittman. He can't get his pull off inside by Jerry Snyder. Two minutes gone. Second period. It's been all Broad Ripple so far. Robinson? Yes. Jeff Robinson is six feet eight inches tall. He is only a junior. He averages 23, nine rebounds per contest. 31 to 14. Mackey blocked at a foul. Foul is on Jeff Atkinson. At the end of the first period, Broad Ripple had a 23 to 12 lead. It is now 31 to 14, and that signifies the largest lead that Broad had so far in this contest. Ripple has 
lost only twice this year. As you look at this replay again, Joe. Here, well, let's look at this and see if Jeff Atkinson gets him on the arm. It's a long shot. A little hard to tell. It was at the top of the screen there, but that's a long ways away for Bill to have to be shooting. <laughs> Here is Bill Mackey. He is a 60% free throw shooter. That is only his third point of the morning. Coach Basil Mobby says he is the best 18 to 20 foot shooter in the entire Indiana. But he has not gotten on track so far in this contest. Now here comes that full court press we told you about. Five minutes and 35 seconds to play in the half and a 15 lead for Broad Ripple. And the Rockets are not afraid to put it up under any conditions. Robinson guarded by Mackey and they got a three second lane violation call. As I started to say, Ripple has lost only twice this year. Indianapolis, Washington beat them 73-72, and they lost at South Bend Play 70 and 61. They were down 16 to 3 in the first period. Here's a Joe first period stats: 5 of 11 for Connersville, 46 percent. 10 of 17, Broderpool's 59 per rebounds, 8 to 6 in favor of Broderpool. The stats do not belie the fact that it was 23 to 12 because the stats are pretty even in the first period. The only thing, Jerry, they got 17 to 11 for Connersville. Is the only uh, they were getting some second. Uh, shots off their offensive board. Tap control by Bill Mackey. Good move that time from Jeff Atkinson. 31-16, your score. Broad Ripple not in front with five minutes and ten seconds to play, and this is the first half of that. Mackey forces the shot and got it, but bottom score. Jeff Robinson picks up personal number two. The basket will count, and Bill Mackey's got his second field goal. That's why he does a nice job of faking and then going up. And he uses that left arm. It looked like Jeff Robinson was trying to get out up there. They're not letting him block many shots, it doesn't look like. Bill Mackey, as you might expect, all South Central Conference, picks up the free throw. He is now three out of three from the line. After a two-point first period with one field goal, he has totaled five of this quarter, seven for the afternoon, and it's a 31 test now with exactly five minutes to play in this first half. That's called breaking the press by yourself by King Duke. <laughs> in doubt, give the ball to the little guy. Bill Smith. Oops. Comes up the sideline over there. They're going to with a little bit of a spread here to try to bring him out of that zone, Joe. Uh -huh. He said we don't like that zone, fellas. They're going to trap now. Half-court trap, it looks like. They're just going to move the zone out and look to trap the ball. Three men on the side is Tracy. They go that away. It is Tracy and Duke will do most of the ball handling. They'll get some help from Atkinson, who has it right now. Ball and five seconds to play in the half. 31 to 19. Roderick for leading. Robinson trying to add to it. He cannot. And that's how get up and a foul in backcourt as Kidd tried to get out of heavy traffic. He is fouled by Jerry Snyder. Number 40, number two on Jerry. Up to the other end. Joe, I suppose that kind of an offensive uh, decision could backfire on a team, could it not? Because their, their offense is really cooking. About losing the momentum, that's right. But they still got the ball into Robinson. The only difference is that they didn't have the offensive rebounders there because they were short more. Looks like Robbie's going to keep shooting when he gets it. They're doing an awfully good job of getting it to him today. You're looking at Al Kitt, number 50. Now three for three from the line. Nine points this morning. Al Kitt, a senior at 6'7". He also sucks it with conference this year. Not hard to tell why. He's an outstanding ball player. That's seven points in a row, Jerry, for Countersville. Well, they get a break on the uh, pass and a brilliant play by Bill Mackey. They had a two-on-one, the pass intended for Dave Brooks, and Mackey just stepped in and stripped him of it. Baseline, nice. He boots on the ball the ball. The ball will be again to the 32 that he beat Brooks. Alan Brooks, that's number one. Joe, I happen to be here Thursday. And, well, let's look at this again. This is a great job. Watch him throw the ball up there, looking for the foul all the way. Knows he can't get that shot off. That's Mark Lee, by the way, 24, will be at the line. I was here Thursday, and I watched Basil Mobby's team work on that particular baseline play. That is not an accident where that forward sneaks along that baseline and gets the pass from the low-posted high man, or the low-posted big man, because they worked very hard on that Thursday. Well, they need to get the ball to that open man. They can't hold on to the ball because Broderville's trapping them when they pick the ball up and they're uh, off the dribble. So they need to move the ball. That's Mark Lee, a 6'4 junior, an outstanding jumper. His average six per game, he's 14 in the two regional contests, 10 in the first and four in the second. His rebounding total is just under six per game. Mark Lee's first point of the morning. Makes it 31 to 22 now. Broad Ripple still in front, but the lead was at one time 17 points. Robinson pulls down the missed shot. Four minutes to play, first half, a 31-22 lead now. 
the water, twelve full of school. Here they be marvelous. Right number seven in the state of the Associated Press, number four by United Press International. King Duke from ten. King Duke's first field goal this period, a half a dozen points. Duke averages 10.1, but that's not his true value to the ball club. He's the guy that takes the ball when there's some kind of a problem. Pittman across the line. Faces the man to man, thrown up by Waterpool. They'll use that most of the time. Zimmerman in the corner. Penetration inside to Mackey. Forces the shot and misses it. Rebound back up and good by Mark Lee. Great rebound, Joe. That's a nice follow by Lee. Mackey, uh, Bill, uh, Jeff Robinson came over. That's about his fourth block shot. And he blocked Mackey's shot, but there was a nice follow by. You see King Duke brings it across the timeline with that left fist clenched high in the air. They swing it to Tracy and back again. Now Tracy, not the shot. King Duke, he doesn't want it either from 17 feet away. They lob it down the corner again to Tracy. He looked for the outlet pass and couldn't see Zimmerman up court. Here is Pittman. Swings it dead, stepped away out of bounds to Connersville. Connersville Spartans, 19 and 5 on the year. They have been in the Sweet 16. This is the 16th time. They've been in the final eight five times, final four three times, and the final two once. In fact, they won the championship in 19. So, but Myron Dickerson is the coach. Short, out of bounds to Waterfield. Maybe Gary West made two. 80 to 63. They finished the year 27 and 2 that year. And they had the Mr. Basketball in Hoosier Land, Phil Cox. Out of the lineup. Dave Brooks, number 32 for the Broad Ripple Rockets. Inbounded to the deep man, King Duke. With two to go in the half, it's 33 to 24. Broad Ripple. But they have been ahead by 17. That is the new man of the ball game, Dave Christopher, number 34, a 6 3 senior. Christopher's not seen a lot of playing time this year, and he's in there right now as part of the spread offense, and there is the steal. Great play by Mark Lee. Up court, it goes to Pittman, cannot get it, and the rebound comes off to Robinson, and a foul, rope walking violation on, uh, on Big Jeff Robinson. And the Mojo has done a little bit of a turnaround, and you got to credit Mark Lee with a certain amount of that, because he's played well. That's right, we get a good uh, rebound here by Jeff Robinson. He does travel, it's a nice call by the official. Watch his feet, there we go. Back to line to go, and the Pottersville Spartans have it. Outside is Zimmerman, this is Pittman. That is Steve Pittman's first two points of the day. Steve averaging 8.2, has cut it down to a seven-point ball game, a 33 to 26, with a minute 45 to play in the half. Here is Robinson, it is good, it will count, and the foul is called on Mark Lee. Number one on Mark as Robinson gets the turnaround jumper, his 10th point of the day. Let's watch uh, Robinson turn to his right here. He's been turning to his left all the time. He turns around, and Mark Lee is not going to block that shot. He doesn't want to foul a guy that much bigger than he is, about four or five inches. Jeff Robinson and Stacy Turan of this wonderful ball club, Joe, have just been named all city by the Indianapolis Basketball Coaches Association. And Robinson's only a junior. Converts the three-point play. He has 11 points down. It was credit today. His average is 21-3. Now with a minute 40 seconds to play in the half, it's a 10-point ball. Connersville is trailing. They've got the basketball, and they're a little bit of trouble. They better hurry. 36 to 26. They've got it to Mark Lee. Out of Pittman. And what wonderful defense is really tenacious so far today. Here's the open man. Lee, yes. Well, that's one of the negative things about that kind of Joe. Once a guy gets free, there's nobody to cover up for you. That's right. If you get the big guy away from the basket. Uh, but they made some great traps there. Aggressive defense. 36-28. Eight-point lead, Broad Ripple. Tapped away, and last touch by Jeff Robinson. That was an excellent call, Joe. It's right in front of us here. And Robinson did get the... Uh, the last touch after the defensive Matt for Connorsville stepped in and tap it away. He certainly did. Both teams playing a lot of full court now. Brought up will pick it up full court man-to-man -man defense with traps. Inside a minute. Mackey lost it. Walk. Mackey has not had a good, good first half. Not the kind of half we might have expected from him, but part of that is due to the fact that Broderbill has really done a number on him defensively. Up court pass intercepted by Rick Zimmerman. One of the starting forwards for the Connersville Spartans, and they throw it away. Pittman tried to go to Mackey. Mackey came out of the baseline area, and Pittman threw it in the stands.
Looks like a nice call. It looked like Zimmerman was set there. He's still moving over toward the sideline. It would take a little guy like King Duke to get through that. That is true. Zimmerman will go sit down for a while with a third personal foul. And number 12, Gary Gazelle, a six-foot junior with a 2.6 scoring average, will enter the first time. King Duke is at the line where he is two for two. King has six points. Well, has done a good job, as Joe pointed out, getting back in this contest. Joe, what was their string of successive points? What did you they had eight in a row, yes. And that chopped that lead down from 17 to 9 in a hurry. It's right now at 38-28, back up to 10. King Duke, four out of four from the line, eight points. Down to two, down to one. Pittman shot is short. That's the first half of play. Well, some heavy conversation to be done in the room with the Connersville Spartans at halftime as Basil Mobby heads down along with Bill Smith and the Vulnerable Rockets. Halftime, it's 38-28 Broad Ripple. Joe and I will be back with our halftime activities in just a moment. Everyone knows that a smile means you're feeling good. This year... Hook's professional prescription people will fill over 8 million prescriptions. That should help keep a lot of people smiling. And smiles mean a lot to us. If it's important to your family's health, it's important to Hook's dependable drugstores. To introduce New Mellow Yellow, the world's fastest soft drink, here are Randy Smith and Gus Williams. Two of the world's fastest basketball players in a fast drinking contest. It's Smith on a fast break with his lemony smooth mellow yellow. Double dribble! Oh, but Smith's called for a foul as Williams lays up his great tasting mellow yellow to win easily at the buzzer. Mellow yellow. No wonder they call it the world's fastest soft drink. Try it! 182 day money market certificates from American Fletcher are easier to get because we're easier to get too with 60 convenient locations. You can invest in one in less time than it takes to open a checking account. We'll even send you a monthly interest check. Invest $10,000 or more today and you'll earn at this high rate for this annual effective yield. Why does American Fletcher make investing in money market certificates so easy? Easy. We want to be your bank. Fellas, you've learned how to start a fire, blaze a trail, and tie knots. Now for something tough. You're going to learn how to find the best Chevrolet deals in town. You're going to learn how to find Bud Wolf Chevrolet. <laughs> now, now, wait a minute. I didn't promise you a picnic. It isn't easy to find the best Chevrolet deals in town. Is it on Keystone? No, no. Bud Wolf stands alone in service, savings, and location. Now, let's take a look at the map. Bud Wolf is three minutes west of Glendale on 62nd Street. You get out your compass, you see. Sir? Yeah, hmm. What's the address? Well, yes, it's uh, 1045 East 62nd Street. Yay! <laughs> yes. We are back now at Hinkle Fieldhouse, the Indianapolis semi-state. Joe, there's other action going on, of course, uh, around the state, and we'll be getting some scores coming in. So as soon as we do, we want our viewers to know that we'll be passing those scores along, one of which we're particularly interested in the Indianapolis area is the Carmel-Andrean uh, game. Andrean uh, ranked number five in the state, and the Carmel Greyhounds a bit of a surprise. Well, of course, Carmel knocked off the number one uh, Anderson Highland team last week and then won the, uh, went ahead and won the regional again, <coughs> excuse me, against Delta. They're going against a very big big team in Andrian. It's an interesting ball game also going on down in Evansville, Joe, and I'd, I'd love to see what's happening down there, and they're just getting in the way because of the time difference, and that is Terre Haute South and New Albany. For those who do not know, New Albany ranked number two in the state, unbeaten, and a kind of a ball club that could do a lot of things. they got three guys that start that are six feet, eight inches tall. That's about as big as your Butler ball club, isn't it? Well, they're a little bigger down there in that uh, semi state than our ball club, uh, I hope they have some tall officials because with uh, New Albany and uh, and then with Terre Haute South having uh, Mahuron and uh, Thompson uh, six eight and six nine, why and uh, about two or three six eight guys on the uh, New Albany team. There are going to be some big people around that hoop. Ought to be a great game. I saw South in the. Uh, Terre Haute South in the sectionals, and they were very fortunate to win, being down by four points with 20 seconds to go. Uh, one of our TV4 games of the week this week, we were down in New Albany for their game against Jeffersonville, and I said when I walked out of there right then that if they got out of their own sectional, Joe, that New Albany had an awfully good shot at winning the state title, and I would think if they can get out of this, well, the winner of this Terre Haute South New Albany game has got an awfully good shot at making its way to Market Square next Saturday. I think they should have the best shot of, of getting here. However, you know, sometimes when you have to play such a tough opponent in that afternoon game, you overlook that night right. night team in the, at this point in the season of the tournament. You just can't do that or you might be watching. 
We're at halftime here at Hinkle Fieldhouse. It's a 38 to 28 basketball game. Broad Ripple leading Connersville. It was 23 12 at the first period, 38 28 at halftime. But Joe, before we take any time and go into the individual stats, your thoughts in the first half? I thought Broad Ripple was awfully effective early, and Connersville was effective late. Well, I think Broad Ripple's defense has been the difference in why they're out in front. They've just been very aggressive the entire first half. I thought that uh, Connersville came back, as you mentioned, uh, in the second quarter there because of their defense. They, they became much more aggressive. They went full court. They looked to trap. So the defense, I think, has determined what's going on here and how people have got out in front and then, of course, with Connersville catching up. Ten point lead at halftime for the seventh ranked Broad Ripple Rockets, 38 to 28. And Joe and I'll be back and take a little more in depth look at the individual scoring in the first half of play when we return to Hinkle Fieldhouse in just a moment. The automobile business is very competitive. You know that. To sell automobiles, we need customers. We need you. The question is, do you need us? We believe you do if you're thinking about buying a new or used car because if it's price you want, if it's service, courtesy, whatever, hey, you've got it at Dave Mason Buick. Why? Oh, Dave needs the money. That's why. They call them pippers. They're the professionals at Pip Printing Centers. Businesses are looking for ways to cut costs and improve profits while not sacrificing quality and service to their customers. Printing is one way to do this. That's why more businesses are having their printing done at Pip Printing Centers. We offer quality, service, and lower cost. Let us quote your company's next printing job. We guarantee to meet your deadlines. We're Pip, your professional while you wait printers. We're everywhere, and there's one of us near you. There's nothing like growing up on an Indiana farm, offering protection for it as part of our business. We were born over a hundred years ago when a group of Indiana farmers agreed to share each other's future misfortunes. Today we offer broad coverage, not only farm and crop hail protection, but also home, auto, and business insurance throughout the state, with over 350 independent agents to serve you. People you can look to when you need a friend. Indiana Farmers and Town and & Country Mutual Insurance Companies. Helping keep your family healthy is one of the main concerns of your Hooks pharmacist. And that's why we put child-resistant safety caps on your moisture and light-resistant medicine containers. Safety caps are specially designed to be difficult for little hands to open. And they help keep potentially harmful medications away from youngsters. But if you find your prescription containers are too hard to open, and there are no little ones in your home, you can ask your pharmacist in green for regular caps. Just one more reason Hooks drugstores are first in prescriptions. Joe, let's take a look at the individual leaders for both these ball clubs. For the Broad Ripple Rockets, only one player in double figures. That's Jeff Robinson with 11. He had six in the first and five in the second period. Connersville is being led by Al Kidd, their big fellow, their 6'7 senior center, who has 10 points in the first half. And it's, it's the big guys who are battling each other. Joe, you have some team statistics that may tell a story also. Yes, and Broad Ripple stayed hot there. They uh, started out with a 55% uh, in the first quarter and stayed right there at 55 uh, Connersville did better now in the, in the second quarter. They're up to 45 percent, but they only had 22 shots as compared to 27 for Broad Ripple. And I think that comes from the second and third efforts of Broad Ripple's offensive rebounders. However, Connersville has done a pretty good job of not allowing that many shots. Uh, free throw percentage is pretty similar, 8 for 10 and 8 for 11 there. Rebounds, five more for uh, Broad Ripple than, uh, than for Connersville, 17 to 12. And in most cases on those extra rebounds, Joe, Broad Ripple has turned those into buckets. Well, that's what unfortunately happens to the opponents when Jeff Robinson or uh, Jeff Atkinson or Jerry Snyder get that ball. That's right. They stick them right back in there. They're very good at that. Interesting to note also, Joe, that the turnovers are even. You would have thought from just watching and not keeping notes that there might be more on Connersville's side of the ledger. Well, I think uh, you hit it on the head, though, uh, Jerry, when you said that when Connersville came back, they forced some errors by uh, Broad Ripple in the second quarter. I'm sure that uh, we didn't have that at the end of the first quarter, but I'm sure that Connersville had more errors in the first quarter. All right, again, at the end of one period, it was 23 to 12 with Broad Ripple out in front. They kicked that lead up to 17 points early in the second period, and then Connersville began to get it together, chopped it down to only eight, and at halftime, it's a 10, 38-28. Joe and I return to Hinkle Fieldhouse in second half action after this break. Tears, 
An investment in a 35 millimeter camera means you'll want only the best in photo finishing. So turn to Hooks for expert processing by Levers. Levers professionals process and hand inspect so you don't pay for your mistakes. If a problem is suspected, you'll receive a helpful hints pamphlet to help you solve it. And Levers uses only Kodak paper for the good look. Remember, expert photo finishing is as close as your neighborhood Hooks dependable drugstore. mileage and good value and Ford doing something about it during Ford's fuel economy celebration make your best deal on a new 1980 Thunderbird and Ford will send you a check for $500 buy a high mileage new Fairmont and get $300 just take delivery by March 22nd Ford's really putting its money where the mileage is Carol there's money where the mileage is up to $500 there's mileage news at Ford We're back now at Hinkle Fieldhouse on the campus of Butler University. I'm Jerry Baker, along with Joe Sexton, and uh, we are set to go now with second period play. Shooting uh, stats in the first half, as Joe mentioned, were uh, rather similar. 45, not, not similar, 46% for Connersville, 56% for Broadway. Well, that tells an awful lot, but they're getting a lot more shot opportunities. And Joe Sexton, what do you suppose that Basil Mulvey might have gone over in the second, uh, in the locker room for the second half, other than the fact that he wants his ball club to try to stay as, as cool as they can. Well, I think probably the most important thing you talked to him about was uh, what they were successful with, and that was their aggressive defense in the second quarter. I'm sure he's going to encourage them to do that, even to the point of uh, full court pressure and more trapping. I would anticipate that from Connersville. On the other hand, Broderick will get out in front by 17, as you mentioned. And then they got uh, got to throwing the ball a little long and taking some chances on the breaks. And I'm sure Beth is trying to calm them down and telling them they have a 10-point lead and they got it by taking a little time, having patience, and knocking the ball into the big fella. There was a slight delay. You saw Bill Smith sitting on the sidelines. Basil Mauby, who has not sat down as of yet, you see him in the upper <laughs> left-hand corner of your screen. He was late getting out here and, in fact, had to call the players over and regroup them. I don't know where he went, but he was a little late getting here. Well, the Connorsville Spartans with Bill Mackey off the uh, shot right off the top and a foul called immediately. The foul will be against number 24, Mark Lee of Connorsville. And on Mark, that'll be personal foul number one, the first of the second half, Joe. Here we go now. Over again, we've seen quite a few of those. Nice rebound there by Snyder. They're calling that a foul every time, and it is a foul. It's still a 10-point ball game. 10-point lead belongs to Broad Ripple. They have not trailed. They have been tied twice, back at two and back at four. Here is Mackey trying to keep the ball alive. Indeed, he does, but it's picked up by Jerry Snyder. The crowd wanted a walking violation. King Duke feeds it down to Tracy, back to Duke. They come near side to Turan. They go in the corner to Snyder. Can't get it. The rebound on the floor is picked out of there by Mark Lee. Here comes Cottersville. Down the lane, he is tripped. And let's check the foul. Yeah, they're putting it, they say, on Kevin Tracy. I'm not sure Tracy was the guilty party, but that's who the foul will be on. Number two on him. Right back now to Gary Gazelle, who gets a starting call here in the second half. He's being trapped out on the uh, timeline area. Now Pittman's wide open and missed the shot. Picked up by the red shirts of Connersville, and Mackey's got it. Joe, that was about the most aggressive defense we have seen so far out of uh, Connersville. Oop. Sure was, and it was a nice, smart move by... Uh
Joe, we have seen the last three Saturdays some of the strangest shots in the world out of Jeff Robinson. He takes them from every conceivable angle. Robinson was uh, four, and make yes. <laughs> 14 points for Jeff. That moves it back to an 11 point lead for the Broderbill Rockets with six and a half minutes to play in the third period. Second ball, a good one this afternoon. Shelbyville's Golden Bears and the Bearcats of Muncie Central. Champions the last two years. Mackey, no. Rebound out of bounds. Last of Broad Ripple's Jerry Snyder. Connorsville superintendent, Dr. John Light. Carl Hilton is the principal. Ed Schilling, the athletic director. I talked with Ed a few moments. Heights ball game. The enrollment of 1,312. It's a three-year school. That's Bill Mackey. And I'll give Mackey credit for one thing, Joe. He's not shying away. He continues to let her rip. Jerry knows he has to do it. Uh, they've relied on him all season. They can't uh, do anything but stay with him right now. And so he can't hesitate. That's one thing he can't allow himself to do. He almost had the steal. Rottersville still in that 2-3 zone, but they're a little more uh, aggressive than they were early in this contest. Here's Tracy knocking it home. Kevin uh, with eight now. He had three field goals in the first period, was shut out in the second quarter. Here's double dribble called against Gary Gazelle. And Broderbill gets it again. 43 to 32. It is Broderbill with the lead. They have never looked back uh, in this ball game. Once they got the lead, the pressure was cut. Oh, it was put on them, I guess, midway through period number two, and the lead was chopped down to eight points. But for the most part, a lot of breathing room. King Duke. Over to Turan and back to Duke. Now Turan again. Back, turns down the 15-footer, and it's stripped away beautifully by Gazelle. Gazelle is on the move, and he lost it away. He tried it behind the back, and it ended up right Kevin Tracy. 43-32, Broad Ripple with the ball and the lead with 5.15 to play, and add two more from Kevin Tracy. That's 10 for him. I like that, that uh, Kevin Tracy still shooting. He's had about five shots this uh, quarter, and it has been awful close on him, and he's getting the kind of shots he hits very well. Pittman inside to Kidd. Kidd missed a little five-footer, and the rebound comes right off into the hands of Jerry Snyder, and the Rockets on the break again. Stacy Turan missed. Rebound pulled out of there by Mark Lee. And at mid-court, a collision, and the foul is on. King Duke, and he doesn't like it. That's two on King Duke and the second against the ball club in this third period of action. And Joe, take a look at this again. All right, let's see if he's set. A little hard to tell there. Got there so early, but uh, Mackey did turn around and look for him, which is a good point for the players. You need to look around and see if somebody's trying to position you there once you receive a pass. Pittman can't get it. Rebound yelled off of there by Stacy Turan, and that is Bill only getting one opportunity at the shot. Four minutes, 35 seconds to play. Third period, 45 and 32. Mackey with good position. Hottersville needs a run of points here. Here's Mackey about 18 feet out. Robinson clears the board. Off to King Duke. Lob it up the left wing to Stacy Turan. Turan gets a little bit of breathing room as he moves in on Pittman and gets his bucket. Stacy with eight. That's the first time he has scored since the opening period. And timeout, Cottersville. It's 47 to 32. Broad Ripple, 4 12, third period, back in the Almost any time of year, breathing can become difficult when colds and fever, that stuffed up feeling in your head, team up to make you feel miserable. But through steam therapy from DeVilbus vaporizers, relief is in sight. DeVilbus vaporizers dissipate a soothing steam recommended by doctors. And for days when the humidity is low, the DeVilbus humidifier helps keep you warm and dry. Look for DeVilbus vaporizers and humidifiers at your nearby Hooks dependable drugstore. In goal, in his first professional game, our own Olympic claim, Jim Gray. A Coke and a smile makes me feel good. That's the way it should be. Take it from two guys who've had a lot to smile about lately. In the first four minutes of the third period of play, Broad Ripple has outscored Connorsville by a count of nine and four. And Joe, they've got that momentum right back where they had it early in this contest. And Connor, it's going to be interesting now, I think, for us to look and uh, see what the timeout or why a basin called the timeout, see what he wants to do. Full court pressure by Broad Ripple here. Pretty smart move on Broderbill's part. I would not expect that 
Connersville would have considered that a possibility. Halfway through period number three, Pittman in and out and back inside again. Or Steve, that's only his second field goal. He had one in the second period of play. He averages 8.2. He had 15 points total in the two regional games last week in Connersville. 47-34, 49-34. There is Kevin Tracy again. Tracy has already matched his first half output of six points. He has 12 total now for the, for the afternoon. And again, the Ripple Rockets in that full court press, and Pittman does get it across the timeline in good fashion. Zimmerman to Mackey. And Bill picks up his third bucket this period. He has 13 points today, averaging 19 and a half per contest. All-state, all-star candidate, outstanding baseball player. They tell me, Joe, that Bill Mackey can throw the ball in excess of 100 miles per hour. A lot of baseball, Major League Scouts looking at him. Well, he has great legs, strong upper body. Robinson turning around again with his fifth point of this period, 16 of the afternoon. And Robinson approaching his 21 3 per game scoring mark. It's 51 to 36. Broad ripple. Nice reverse move inside by Mark Lee, a 6 4 junior. I think Joe Sexton and Mark Lee's impressed me about as much as anybody in this ball club today. Mark has been a big help since he came into the game. Broad ripple's given full court pressure after every score now. Connorsville's looking to uh, score. Instead of just beating it down the floor, breaking the pressure, they're looking to beat the pressure and score. Got the ball to Tracy deep in that left corner, and Tracy shuffled his feet trying to work his way out. Turnover against Broad Ripple. Here comes Connorsville. They got an advantage on the break. They've got it inside to Mackey, and Mackey scores. Bill Mackey, M-A-C-K-E. He has four buckets this period. He had only two in the entire first half. And if he comes alive, Joe, they can shoot themselves back into this thing. Into Robinson, deflected in a foul. Mark Lee will pick up number three, the second against him, and the ball club this period. It's 51 to 40, with Waterfall still in front as a huddle at the free throw line. And you look at this again. Well, it's a nice pass by King Duke in there. And if they keep getting the ball in there to Jeff Robinson, is going to have a hard time making up this deficit that they have at 12 points. A 52-40 ball game. And a dozen point lead now. Ball Broad Ripple with two minutes and 14 seconds of playing time in the third period. Ball is deflected free and Duke made a great move to get it as he took it away from Rick Zimmerman. Duke's first bucket, second half, 10th point of the day. <laughs> Inside two minutes, and that was pure speed and quickness there. And hustle. Pittman trying to get it back, cannot, and the boards belong to Jeff Robinson. And right now, Broad Ripple is in a position to really bust this thing wide open. Rebound on the other side, and the whistle from the foul. And the foul is against Connersville. It is on Rick Zimmerman, and I've got Rick with four. And a lineup goes Mark Lee. That is correct. It is the fourth on Zimmerman. Let's see now if Basil Mulvey wants to make the change. He apparently will with number 12, Gary Gazelle, coming off the bench. Here comes Gary into the lineup. And you'll see the departure of Rick Zimmerman, a football and baseball player with the Spartans. Outstanding hustler, and he has had so far only four points this afternoon on two field goals in the first period. Baseline violation on the inbounds pass. Connersville gets it back again. Connersville, as I mentioned, lost two of their first three, then sprang out eight successive victories, ended up the season with a win at Newcastle, 79-67. Their biggest loss of the year was 67-49 as a walking violation is called on Steve Pittman. They lost to Jeffersonville. And their biggest win of the year, believe it or not, was 65 points. They beat Cambridge City 98 to 33. They were over 100 points in the regional of Cottageville, beating Greensburg 101 to 68. A minute 25 to play in the third quarter, 54 to 40. Ball ripple. Rebound, Jeff Atkinson. Little turnaround shot out front of score. Atkinson's first two second half, seventh for the afternoon. And the 16-point lead now belongs to the Broad Ripple Rockets. Their biggest lead has been 17. Whistle. Bumping foul. Either on Atkinson or Robinson. Let's check it out. It'll be on uh, Jeff Atkinson. That is three on him. Broad Ripple's come out of their full court pressure. Now they've dropped back to half court defense. 
But they're still looking to trap whenever they come close with the ball. And when the Connersville player dribbles close to another brother the player, they're looking to trap all, all the time. This is Mark Severn. Mark's father, Al, was a basketball coach at Ben Davis for a number of years. Now in private business in Connersville. And precious little movement from uh, Bill Smith. He's seen his ball club have some problems like that this year. That's the kind of a game they play. They do some strange things from time to time, but they still manage to get the job done. Mackey rims it. Rebound put right down in the hands of Jeff Robinson. And here come the Ripple Rockets again. King Duke playing catch right side with Tracy firing and missing and the rebound by Steve Pittman their 5'11 senior guard. In a hurry it comes to Gary Gazelle. Gazelle drops it inside and he's fouled. It'll be on King Duke and that'll be three on King Duke. Joke you might take a look at some of the other scores we have coming in here. First off the replay of that last action though. OK look at the drive here now. King Duke reaches in right there and gets his arm. It's a good call. Gary Gazelle beat. They call it no uh, no shot to so get it out of bounds. Looks like. Yeah. See Gary Andrean is leading Carmel 46-42 after three. At halftime, Warsaw has Marion down. Is that correct? At 32-24, 24-22. It looks like Warsaw's got an eight-point lead over Marion at halftime, and Terre Haute South and New Albany just getting underway. As we have chances, we'll pass those scores along to you as we're made available to us. Appreciate the help of some of our fellows here with Channel 4 who are making an effort to get those scores. 28 seconds to play in the third period and Waterpool is content to sit on it for a little while as they've got a 14 point lead 56 to 42. Robinson will take it and the rebound pulled out put back up and it won't go again. Put four put up and finally good by Stacy Turan. Turan's 10th point of the afternoon. And with eight seconds to go, it's a 16-point lead for Connersville. Here is Pittman at the buzzer. In and out, no good. Tapped up and good by Al Kidd. And that's it. Kidd's 12th point of the day. That's the end of three. After three quarters, it is Paul Ripple, 58. Connersville, 44. We'll be back. This is High X Simple. The good news from 25 dealers serving Central Indiana. I'm Paul Page, and today the good news is this Pontiac Trans Am racing jacket. You can get one with any 1980 Pontiac you buy from your Central Indiana Pontiac dealer between now and May 15th. So hurry. The offer good while supply lasts. With 25 dealers serving Central Indiana, that's the good news today from Pontiac Central. You don't need a poet to let a friend know you care because there's an American greetings card from Hooks for just about every wish, thought, or feeling you might want to express. Feelings of joy, of sorrow, thoughts for today, and hopes for tomorrow. You'll find them all at Hooks. So you never need to play the poet at Hooks. All you need to do is care. This is Jerry Baker along with Butler University head basketball coach Joe Sexton at Hinkle Fieldhouse, the Indianapolis semi-state, now on a Saturday afternoon. Joe, you ever played a Saturday morning ball game in your life as a competitor? Uh, out in the alley behind my house. <laughs> <laughs> that was last week, too, as I recall. <laughs> They moved the games up to 11 o'clock this year. It's not a bad idea. It gives the youngsters a little more rest time between sessions. Sure does. I, I think it's an excellent idea. 14-point lead for Broad Ripple. One of these clubs won't need that rest time. They can go on back home if they so desire because somebody's going to be out of this tournament. We're down to the Sweet 16. After the afternoon sessions are over, we'll be down to the final eight. That's Robinson. tough luck. That's but a nice try. King Duke has made some great lob passes today. Gracie with pressure at midcourt. Pottersville gets it to Mackey. Mackey will take the screen and the shot. It won't go for him. And the rebound pulled out by Jerry Snyder. Mackey's had an awfully tough day for the field. Here is a turnover again. A walking violation on King Duke. Well, Basil Mobby, now you're looking at Bill Smith on your screen, but Basil Mobby, the coach of Pottersville, has not tossed in the towel. He and his assistants, Richard Young out of Purdue and Steve Dunnington of Northern uh, College and David DeMuth of IU are still working hard. Mark Lee getting the bucket. Mark now with nine. Number 24. He's averaged two blocks per game. Not bad for a youngster, 6'4", and only a junior. Move their defense out now, Jerry. Moved it out toward midcourt more than they had. Good 
defensive play I think that time by Mark Lee out of bounds and Stacy Turan is down to the baseline area he'll trigger the inbounds play number 42 is Turan all city football player both a tight end and defensive back all city all state and all American a little over a minute gone in the fourth period it is 58 46 now with quadruple with the ball and the lead King Duke shuffles it down to Robinson and he scores again Robinson's 19 that's what I was talking about with Duke he may not score a lot of points but boy he can sure fly get the ball to the open man charging foul Gary Gazelle number two on him both in this period Gazelle a member of the football team at Connorsville High substitution now as Gazelle goes out of the lineup and Basil Balby reinserts Rick Zimmerman number 44 Basil by the way spent six years as a freshman and a junior varsity coach at Caston, Matonic Wad, Logansport, got his first head coaching job at West Washington. A couple of years there, then two at Delta, five at Angola. This is his first year in Connersville. His shot put back up and won't go at a foul call. Kid will get credited with the personal. Number two on him. <laughs> That's a great effort here now. Jeff Robinson just goes right up and gets that ball and gets fouled by Al Kidd. What I'm laughing about there. Coach Smith got excited about it, brought him over, brought Jeff Robinson over and gave him a little skin. He liked it. I think I would too if I was his coach. <laughs> Jeff Robinson now with 21, including for this period, all four of the points. Cap three. Connersville will have it again. Jerry Connersville is making a very concerted effort to uh, get the ball now into Mackey. He's handling the ball almost every time. If he doesn't have a shot, he tries to knock it inside. Six minutes and 19 seconds to play. King Duke almost popping it away. They come back outside, and the long range shot will not fall. Tapped up once, will not go. Finally tapped up again. I think Snyder may get it. Yeah, Jerry. Jerry Snyder with his fourth point. Five minutes, 52 seconds to play in this period. Quadruple out in front, trying to increase their 25 and two mark to 26 and two, and earn the right to go to the championship game tonight. The winner of this contest will play the winner of the Mussy Central Shelbyville game. That's coming up next. We've got it for you here on TV4, so don't go away. Al Kidd at the line. He is four for four from there. Kidd averages 12.1. That was his 13th point of the day, so he's right at his scoring mark. And at 64 to 48. difference in Connersville trying to score against Broderpool's press. Broderpool now is content with this lead to just beat the press down the floor and then hold it up, move the ball around, and get it to the big fella. Like right there. Like that. <laughs> Unofficially now, Jeff Robinson has 23 points and the timeout has been called. With five minutes and 24 seconds to play in the ball game. It's 66 Broderpool, 48 Connersville. Action results at Eagle Fieldhouse in a minute. 182 day money market certificates from American Fletcher are easier to get because we're easier to get too with 60 convenient locations. You can invest in one in less time than it takes to open a checking account. We'll even send you a monthly interest check. Invest $10,000 or more today and you'll earn at this high rate for this annual effective yield. Why does American Fletcher make investing in money market certificates so easy? Easy. We want to be your bank. Doctors warn, never insert cotton swabs into the ear canal to remove wax. Yet that's where excess wax can harden to create pressure, pain. Now, Murine offers the only complete medically approved way for you to remove wax. Only Murine has drops to safely loosen hardened wax when used as directed, plus an ear washer to gently flush wax away. Remember, there's only one complete way for you to remove wax. 
Ear Drops and Ear Washer by Murine. We are back now at Ankle Fieldhouse. Not a bad crowd on hand this afternoon, all things considered. It's a beautiful day in the capital city and a lot of things going on in town. Including a couple of pretty good basketball games here in the Indianapolis semi-state. Lock showing five minutes and 18 seconds to go and a foul is attributed to Broad Ripple. But I think the only party is Jerry Snyder. It is on Jerry, number three on him. And of course, we're now in the bonus situation, the one and one. And that'll send Bill Mackey to the free throw line. Mackey, a legitimate all-state, all-star candidate, has had a reasonably tough afternoon. Joel, they had a hand in his face every time he got the basketball. They certainly have put pressure on him and forced him out a step or two farther than I'm sure he's used to shoot it. He has 16 points now. He's going to score 20 or 25 because they're getting the ball every time down the floor now. They know he has to do it right now. You know, in the regional of Connorsville, Joe, he had 21 out of 28 field goals, so we know he's an outstanding shooter, but he's really had some pressure on him today. Blocking Bob, Mark Lee, I've got four on him. I mentioned the fact that uh, Bill Mackey's a great baseball player. He also plays tennis. Joe, he doesn't appear to be the kind of a kid with a build that he has that would be a very good tennis player, but well, I'll bet you if he gets that ball to the net and you lob it on him, if he can get it back, you're going to have Wilson for lunch because he's going to flat put it down your neck. It's a 16-point lead for Broad Ripple. Uh, they have really been in command throughout most of this contest. King Duke missing. Rebound comes off to Connersville. Spartans, 19-5, coming into today's contest. They've got a trophy in their trophy case. And back in 19... 72. Wonderful as they pick up two more points from Stacy Turan, giving him 12 in the day. Still looking to put one of those winning trophies in their showcase up in the near north side. It's a 68 52 contest. It is Broderbull with four and a half minutes to play. Kid again. Won't go. Couple of white shirts inside. Loose ball. Will put up. Now Kid jumps into the huddle. Coach Basil Bobby says that Al Kidd is the best shooting big man he's ever coached. And he has 16 points to his credit. His average is 12.1. He had 27 points total last week in the Connersville Regional. Connersville won the sectional on their home court, beating Laurel and Union County, then defeated Greensburg and South Dearborn to win the Connersville Regional. So this is the first time they've been off their home court. We got a chance to see Shelbyville, Joe, in the second ball game. They surprised Columbus East in that regional, so they may have something to, to shout about. Tap control by Mackey in front of our broadcasting vantage point with clock showing four minutes and 20 seconds to play in this contest. Pittman into Mackey. Can't get it. Tapped up by Kidd and good. Now Kidd was six in this period, 18 in the afternoon, and it's a 68 to 54 game as we hit the midway point of period number four. Into Robinson, and Jeff's got two more. He makes it look easy, Joe. He looks like he's got leg going everywhere, but they all end up in the same spot. He does, and then it just uh, he just smooths out at the end, then knocks it right in. Nice follow-up, but it wouldn't go. And now here is Kid. After Lee missed it, Kid followed it up, and he's got a hot hand here in this fourth period. Eight points here, 20 in the afternoon. He is the top scorer now for the Cottersville Spartans. It's still a 14-point ball game, though. Broad Ripple out in front with three and a half minutes. Now here comes the spread again. Coach Bill Smith of the Broad Ripple Rockets wants to eat up some of that time. Whistle, offensive foul. Stacy Turan, three on him. Turan picking up his third personal foul. Let's see if he has position now in the basket. Call the charge right there. A little tough to see right on the baseline. Timeout call. With the score 70 and 56, the Broad Ripple Rockets have that 14-point lead. Joe briefly just looking ahead here. Second contest this afternoon, I think, is going to be one heck of a shootout. Muncie Central really isn't supposed to be here. There are a lot of people thought they wouldn't get out of there, maybe even their sectional. They had a great ball game against Richmond. And a lot of people had already conceded that Columbus Regional 
to Columbus East, Lou Giovanini's team, and Shelbyville surprised them. So that could be a good matchup. Well, we have a couple teams here, although you can never count uh, Muncie Central out. Obviously, you can't count Shelbyville out now either, with uh, they're coming here for their second time in a row for the Semi State, Jerry. But uh, I saw Muncie play earlier in the season. And they have a fine team, although, you know, the reason people said they couldn't get out of their sectional maybe is because of Muncie North who beat them during the regular right. season. So, and then they had tough regional, as you pointed out. So, but there, you can't count them out until you beat them right out on the hardwood. You see the score here at Engle Fieldhouse. Not in Evansville, it's Terre Haute South of New Albany. There. <laughs> underneath it I guess doesn't it? Yes. looks like they give uh, Mackey Bill Mackey a chance outside with the ball he didn't have an opening passed it took a dive down in around the basket and they threw him a little pass and they're going to give it to him everywhere five quadruple Rockets have three personals nobody has as of yet attained that fourth personal foul for Connorsville two are in the four foul category Rich Rick Zimmerman and Mark Lee each with four Mackey again yes Mackey now with 19 all deflected away. Broad Ripple will inbound. Connorsville jumps into that full court press. It's a 12 point lead for the Rockets with three minutes and 11 seconds to go. They lob it high in the air and Robinson goes to get it. It's a nice way to beat that pressure if you have a big guy like that as a last resort going up high to your center. They've got an open man on the baseline. Jerry Snyder. Now the Connorsville defense pretty well shuts that off. Right side to Tracy. Kevin had it deflected away. Right on the hand of Steve Pittman. Pittman going in for the layup, and he scored. Oh, what a shot. Great shot by Pittman. King Duke got him also. He saw Duke coming, and Joe watched protect the ball beautifully. Oh, he sure does. He sticks it out there with his left hand, holds up now until King Duke goes flying by, and then puts it in the basket. What a nice play. It looked like, Joe, they called a foul on number 30, Kevin Tracy. I didn't see Tracy in the floor of that action, but that was the signal given us by the officials. Pittman misses the free throw shot. And with the clock showing two minutes and 40 seconds to play, it's a 10-point ball game. Pottersville doesn't necessarily have to hang it up just yet if they can get a couple of quick field goals, but time is really of the essence now. Rockets pretty good at playing keep away. Stacy Turan's in trouble. Robs it to Tracy. Back to King Duke. Jeff Atkinson comes out to help out, but instead they go down in the corner to Durant. Stacy swings out to King Duke with 2.05 to go. It appears that Broderick was not looking to score at all. It hasn't been in Robinson's hands yet. We'll find out if he's going to shoot it when he gets it, but no one else is looking to shoot it off. Atkinson to the corner, back out to Duke. Whistle foul. Reaching in on number 10, Steve Pittman. That's three on Steve. Well, six and one in the South Central Conference this year, tied for first place with Seymour. First time they've had a first place finish since 1954. And a good balanced offense. They use about eight players interchangeably, but just not been enough this afternoon so far. At this point, at this point, Jerry Basil Moby has to decide when he wants his young men to foul. And it, of course, from scouting, he knows who is, are the better free throw shooters for uh, Broad Ripple. Now's when he gets to use that information right down toward the end here. In sectional and regional play, Broderbill is shooting 66%. A minute 55. 71-60. Broderbill with the lead. They have been in command right from the outset of the contest. Here's a foul. It is on 42, Stacy Turan, the fourth on Stacy. Wonderful 
Marshall got a 2-0 lead. Connorsville tied it. Got to 4-2, and they tied it again. And since then, it's all Rutgers. He got out of, got out of one here. You can see uh, Stacy reached around there, but the man was too close, really, to pass the ball. It was too congested. Can't reach over like that and make that kind of foul now with 11-point lead. This is Rick Zimmerman at the free throw line, averaging 6.6 .6 per contest, had 11 in the Connorsville Regional all told. Picks up two free throws, and those are his first two points of the second half. He has totaled six points here today. Whistle reaching in foul. It's on Bill Mackey, number two on him. Roderick will fell behind 23 to 8 in the 23 to 12 in the first period. The one thing they could not afford to do, they had chopped it down to eight, three by ten at halftime, 38 to 28. And show that uh, statistic we saw here coming from the official scorers bench across the way through three quarters in the rebounds are a little bit hard to believe. Well, they gave him 39, uh, 39 rebounds, which was get would have given him 22 for the third quarter alone. So, 39 uh, to 19 rebound wise advantage to uh, Broderpool. And if indeed that is accurate, Joe, if that's not a typo as it were then that's your whole ball game I know he printed it but it could still be a typo <laughs> well I think they definitely have taken over the boards in the second half and maybe it maybe to that degree well Connors was going to have to score every time they come down now they're down by 11 Mark Lee rolling it over the edge oh here's the 11 point a minute and a half to go now 73 64 Broad Ripple with the lead, with the basketball, and content to eat up as much of the clock as they possibly can. Connorsville in a position now. They've got to commit the foul. If they can catch up with the basketball. Stacy Turan back out to King Duke. They do move it well. Connorsville coaching. <laughs> They have a foul, Jerry, and they're wanting to foul Turan. But they're not doing it quick enough. They're not getting after. Bobby just keeps yelling, foul, 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 and finally Pittman does. Boy, did they eat a lot of the clock up there. 52 seconds remain. It's a 73-64 contest. It is broad ripple, and it looks for all the world as so the Rockets will be in tonight's championship game. Reminded that Joe and I will be here at 7.30 tonight for a special half-hour uh, recap. Which is just about to be completed. Stacy Turan, I've got him for five. It is on Stacy, and he indeed is gone. Stacy Turan leaves with 12 points. Started at guard, played hard, Joe. Yes, he did. He's a good defensive player. Watch uh, now, watch Bill Mackey here fake, and then jump into Stacy Turan to get him out of the ball game right there. He's fired by going through his rhythm as the stabilizer. He has him up and ready, but he's going to use as much of the time. There he is right there talking to Bill Smith. He's going to use as much. He has a minute to make the substitution. He's going to use as much of that as he can. I'm not quite sure why he'd want to, Joe, with 44 seconds to go on a nine-point lead, but I'm sure he has his reasons. Well, he wants to uh, Bill Mackey to have to spend a little time here before he shoots that free throw and uh, hopes that maybe he could... Uh, the weight would cool him off or something, and I don't know what you say uh, to the kids. Osville, two shots from Mackey. It worked. It apparently did. Bill Mackey, South Central Conference scoring champion the last couple of years including this year. Mackey has five foot rolls to spray for 20 picks in the afternoon. Out of 40 seconds now. Now it's time to go chasing King Duke. 32 seconds to go. Oh, yes, the job, that'll be five on Steve. 
So the young 5'11 senior will be gone from the ball game. This is his first year on the Cottersville team. And he played hard today. Pittman is gone with six points. His average is 8.2. Gets a good hand from a very noisy and a very well attended Cottersville cheering section directly behind us. Looking into the eyes of number two, Jeff Atkinson. Normally a six man started today. He'll be in and out of that starting lineup. He has seven points. 22 sets to play. Mackey off the mark. That's out of the hands of Jerry Stoddard. Joe will make an effort to get both the coaches if we possibly can at the end of this ball game, which is only 12 seconds away and a reaching in foul to Mackey. On Bill, it's number three. Well, it's a shame that a youngster like Bill Mackey is going to bring his high school career to a close on a losing note because he has been something else in a Cottesville Spartan uniform. When it comes time to select the All-Stars, I'm sure they got to give him some consideration. His free throw shot. And walking. So with eight seconds remaining, they're going to call a timeout as Bogerful. Yeah, the Rockets will take a timeout. We'll keep it right here and uh, set up the situation for you. A 73-65 lead. Bogerful with eight seconds remaining and Joe will break away and head down toward the other end of the floor and we'll make sure we get the coaches of both these ball clubs for you. Congratulate both of them for their efforts. The Rockets will apparently go to 26 and two and meet the winner of our second contest here this afternoon. Muncie Central's Bearcats and the Golden Bears of Shelbyville. Muncie Central 16 and eight and Shelbyville 17 and eight. Muncie Central, pretty much the kind of a Muncie Central ball club you've come to expect over the years. Fundamentally very, very sound. Not a lot of height. Rod Ripple was preseason rated in a tie for 20th. Finished up 20 and 2 in regular season. Number 7 AP, number 4 United Press International. They were 14 and 9 last year, and coming into the season, they lost five lettermen, but they did have five lettermen back, including two starters. So they had the nucleus of a pretty impressive basketball club and their head coach Bill Smith says that this team has the best overall attitude of any he's ever coached and this is his eighth year at Broad Ripple. Cottersville across the line in a hurry won't go this time for Pennington who came in the ball game during the timeout and that's it it's all over. Final score is 73 65 the Broad Ripple Rockets have defeated the Cottersville Spartans and we'll be back to talk with the coaches in just a moment. Stress can rob your body of B and C vitamins faster than you may replace them if your diet is inadequate. Stress Tab 600s help you correct overwork, fad dieting, and other stress situations. Each Stress Tab 600 contains 600 milligrams of vitamin C and B complex, plus the recommended daily allowance of natural vitamin E. So help keep your body in good nutritional balance with Stress Tab 600s, available now at your neighborhood Hooks Dependable Drugs. Just arriving, a new model with many new features. It's called CarMaster. And CarMaster is an exciting new auto policy from Town & Country Mutual Insurance Company. It gives you quality coverage at lower rates. Easy to read with broad coverage features such as automatic coverage for the full policy period on additional or replacement cars if all owned cars are insured with the company. Ask your Town & Country Insurance agent about CarMaster from Town & Country Mutual Insurance. Associated with Indiana Farmers Mutual. See the yellow pages. If you had American Fletcher's combo account, you'd have your checking and savings in one handy book. Right, where's the withdrawal slip? You'd only have to remember one account number for both. I deposited $60 on the 20. There was that $20 on the 60. And oh, each no. month, we'd send you one statement that tells you everything about checking and savings. Normal slip. If you had combo, you'd never have to figure checking service charges because there aren't any. The combo from American Fletcher. Maybe you should have it. I just had that darn thing. If you've had it. How do they do it? How does who do it? Ponderosa. How do they do it? How do they do it? Nobody knows how Ponderosa offers our fish special for so little. All the filet of fish you can eat, all the fresh salad you can eat, and a baked potato. All for one low price. That's our all-you-can-eat fish special. So come on in. 
How do we do it? I don't know how to do it. But I hope they don't how stop. Do what you do, what you do. Jerry Baker back at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Bill Smith, the head coach of the Broad River Rockets, is alongside. Bill, congratulations are in order. I thought your ball club was simply sensational this afternoon. Thank you very much, Jerry. Uh, did the best we could. I think the kids played extremely well. I think they played as well as they could under the adverse conditions. Was it tough getting up for a ball game at 11 o'clock in the morning? No, I don't think that was the problem. The kids did a fine job. I felt like everybody gave 150% out there. They held their composure. They held their character intact. They've represented Indianapolis well, and I hope we can just keep on representing them. One question. You went into that red offense, I thought, early in the ball game. What was your thinking in that area? Well, at that particular time, we had some of our key ball players out of the game or in foul trouble, and I felt like we needed to take some time off. The Jeff Edson. Maybe the, the play of Robinson overshadows some of those guys sometimes, Bill, but you're getting awfully strong play from about four or five players. Well, all year long, uh, Jerry, we've had a good team. These kids have played well together, all composed. They like each other. They live basketball, eat basketball, sleep basketball, and they're pretty concerned about how each other feels. And so it makes the job easy when you've got a great bunch of athletes with good attitude. Now, Coach, now what's your game plan? You're going to have a little more rest time this year than we would have years gone by by starting the game at 11. What's your game plan for the rest of the day? Well, we're going to go back to the school. We'll have some ham sandwiches and a Coke. And about 2.30, 2 o'clock, we'll take them to Ponderosa and have a steak dinner. <laughs> Hopefully without a digest, and then we'll go back and have some rest. Wait until about 7 o'clock or quarter to 7 and start back out at Hinkle. What about, will you get a chance or was it necessary to scout this second ball game? Will one of your assistants stick around for that or will you stay? I would probably be around, Jerry, and probably one of my assistants as well. You really don't care who, who comes in that second game, though, do you? I know you well enough to know that. Well, you're about right. I think at this point of the game, you just have to play them as they come and do the best you can with what you got. All right. Enjoy yourselves this afternoon. We'll see you tonight. Then, Thank Bill. you very much, baby. Thank you. Bill Smith, the coach of the Broad Ripple Rockets, and uh, they've got an outstanding year going, and it's not over yet. It is 26-2, and two, and you can feel the momentum begin to build. The Muncie Central cheering section just to my right, and they've been gearing up for the last half hour or so, building seam. And, of course, across the floor, Shelbyville, likewise, getting set. Joel, rejoin me here, and we'll talk about this second contest and recap the first game for you in just a moment. The cavalry scout. His job was to lead, to know the territory, to bring protection to people and property. That's why today the cavalry scout is the symbol of the independent agents who sell Kemper insurance. They're people you can count on to provide superior Kemper protection for you and your family. The independent agent. Another reason. If it's worth insuring, it's worth Kemper. It's Bronco's Starfire, 18 great hits with Michael Jackson. There's Michael Johnson, plus Fran Jolie and Melissa Manchester. Radio's great hit. The fabulous Little River Band. Journey, 18 hits, almost twice the music of other albums. Rupert Holmes, number one smash. Lobo, plus Knight, Nick Lowe, and more. Isaac Hayes, 18 original hits on Starfire. Available at Airway, Watson, Sears, Osco, Woolworth, Wolco, King, Service Merchandise. Because little hamburgers have become so gosh darn little, the Dairy Queen Brazier created a new six to a pound all beef burger with more burger than bun. But you don't have to stop there. Add a burger, make it a one third pound double, make it a half pound triple. Heck, talk it over with your tummy and we'll make it any way you want. Except in the little funny looking crap we just don't Dairy Queen Brazier gives you more burger. More burger than bun. Dairy Queen Brazier gives you more burger. Channel 4 welcomes the NCAA.
Basil Mauvey has joined me here at courtside, and he comes up and he says, oh, my, you win and you lose. That pretty well sums it up, Coach. They're a great team. I thought our kids gave 100% effort, and I'm really proud to be here and proud to be part of a Carnesville Spartans. But, uh, well, we couldn't make that move. That Robinson's a great player, and Duke just spread him out. Turan's so smart, and uh, it's just a great ball team. Uh, we got behind early and had to make an awful lot of adjustments, and finally we had a couple moves, but... Uh, couldn't break the open, but uh, we're really proud of our team. Easy to coach from the sideline, Basil. We had said in the pregame that the one thing you could not afford to do was get behind by any sizable margin. You did, and that was a tough road to hold. Right. It's, uh, you know, against them, you never know what's going to happen. And, boy, they hit the boards early on us, and uh, we missed a few shots early. And they're a great pressure defensive team, and they took it to us early, and we couldn't get back. And we had it to seven with the ball twice in the first half. And for us, we make those comebacks. But uh, today we... Uh, well, they spread out and kept the ball and wouldn't miss free throws, and Robinson sinks every shot. So uh, I can always say we're really uh, beat by a good team. I feel very proud. Well, you've got reason to be proud because you end up the season with a 19-6 record. You brought them to the semi-state, and I suppose that you'll take a little time off and not think about it, but I would imagine you'll already be gearing up for next year rather quickly. We have a great group. I thought Mark Lee was exceptional oh, today. Great. Uh, Mark Severance had a strep throat all week. He hasn't been able to practice hard, and... That was a big key for us because he's our leading rebounder and he just didn't have the energy today. He hasn't practiced hard all week and we thought we could get him over it, but he wasn't ready. Um, Gary Gazelle, Glenn Eldridge, uh, we're going to have a good team next year and we're going to be back here again. There's a one final question. Bill Mackey, we know his abilities. We know he's a great shooter. He finished up unofficially with 20 on my tally sheet, but boy, he had fingers in his eyes and hands in his face all day long. Right. We, uh, they, early it looks like they might have been getting him a little body, but boy, they're so darn big it's hard for him to shoot over and uh, then he got a string going in the third quarter, and the fourth quarter, uh, he didn't hit, but he hit the free throws, and a great career, uh, 12,031 points, and, uh, or 1,231, that's more than I've made out in the park, so uh, uh, Bill's a great player, and we'd sure like to see him on that all-star team, because he's brought us a long way. Basil, congrats. <laughs> Well, that's Joe to move back in here. The final score again was 73 to 65. Wonderful led all the way. It was 23 12 after the first period, 38 28 at halftime, and 58 44 after three. As Basil said, they did make a run at him, but they simply ran out of time. It's 73 65 the final. Top scores unofficially, of course, for the Wonderful Rockets 25 points for Jeff Robinson, 12 each out of Kevin Tracy and Stacey Turan and 14 points this afternoon for King Duke. For Connersville, also in double figures, three players. Al Kidd led the way with 20 and an awfully impressive fourth period of action. They had 20 points out of Bill Mackey also.